Okay. What up? What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Market Mondays. We got a lot to talk about right now. It's a lot going on right now in the, in the stock market, in the oil market. Crazy day, historic day, yeah. unprecedented day. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. We're going to get to it all. It's crazy, it's crazy. So we're going to get to it. We're going to bring Ian in in a minute. Shout out to EYO. Shout out to EYO University. I'm going to check in. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. This is this is this is going to be a big one. Historic situation that we got going on. Was it him? I see. Guess. Guess him. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go over the, the rules of Market Mondays in a minute. Once we get everybody in here, once we get Ian in. And um, yeah, thank you guys for supporting it too. Like I said, this is an idea that we started. Last week was the first week off to a tremendous success. And we're going to keep it going. Usually it's, it's going to be at 8 um, p.m. Uh, Eastern time. But... Today, we had to move it up a little bit to six, but it will be archived. If anybody was not able to watch it live, it will be archived, but we appreciate everybody being in here. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What's going on? All my earners that was with us on the, the movie call yesterday, what's up? That was amazing. Um, the, the discussion and assessment questions are gonna go out tomorrow afternoon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, shout out to all the EYL University members. Y'all had the, um, the dope, I think it was like 40 people in there. Yeah, we got 40 people in there. It was going crazy, man, like an hour and a half. A lot, I mean, what makes it best, and, and that's one of the best things about in education is that when the people who are in the class, the classroom takes over the discussion. And yesterday, the, 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 the class definitely was taking over the discussion, man. So it was, it was beautiful to watch. Ken, what up? Top earners in the house. What up, Ken? Where we at? Where we at? Where, uh, there you go, right here. There you go. And Dunlap on the check in. The master investor, EYL University sailor still running to May 1st. Uh, <laughs> EYL 149 is the code for the annual discount, 60% off. So if you want to be part of that, you should be at EYL University. There you go. There he goes. Oh, you got, oh, the, you got, the, screen, <laughs> got the screen on him and all that. Can't hear him. You want with the same frame background? No, I'll take it off. You gotta go in um video settings. Yeah, yeah, video settings. Nah, just leave it on. I like it. It's a it's a whole vibe. Nah, but when he moves, it's like in his shirt. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. That's weird. How, how y'all doing? We good, good man. Good. good. Happy Monday to y'all. Yeah, that, that was a little bit wild. <laughs> that was a little bit Market, Market Mondays edition episode two, man. We are back again. It was a crazy day. I, I was actually going to call you, but I said, let me just wait to yeah. skip so I could really ask him the questions I want. I, I, I saw things. I'm like, I need somebody to explain this to me. I was yeah. trying to get him. I called Shadi. He said, yo, let's just save it. And I said, all right, let's just save it. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a good one, man. So first and foremost, thank you. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. It's been a wild day. It's been a wild. We're living through history. Like we're living in. If they made like a Wall Street three, they would they would start with this month. <laughs> <laughs> we are living in historic times. So yeah, it's been it's been crazy, but been good in a good way as well. So it's crazy, man. So we're gonna get into it, but first we're gonna go over some housekeeping items. So here's the deal: how we gonna run Market Mondays, guys? Um, Zoom. Obviously, EYL University members, you guys have video 
um, conferencing rights. So if you wanna ask a question, feel free to raise your hand. Please do not type the questions in on Zoom. Please raise your hand. It, it moves a lot smoother if we can do the um, video conference to ask the questions. And then uh, YouTube, we'll try to get to as many YouTube questions as we can as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is that in the essence of time, because we can do this all day, but um, in the essence to save time, we pick three stocks. This is, this is what we're gonna do moving forward. We pick three stocks um, that we're gonna break down and analyze throughout the course of the show. And um, then we're gonna answer questions, but investment questions, um, not individual stock questions. That's why we, that's why we pick three stocks, because it's not really fair to pick one person's question and not answer another person's question. And you can kind of go back and forth all day. So um, we pick three individual stocks and those stocks will change every single week. And then we'll be given, um, you know, answering different investment questions breaking down some philosophies and everything you need to know about how to get invested and how to make money in the stock market. So before we start, we want to go into it because um, we did the sale on your stock club uh, two weeks ago and it was wildly successful. Um, a bunch of people signed up and then for some reason, I don't know, they, they must've thought it was like an ongoing thing because once it was over, oh, man. a bunch of people hit us Probably up. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know when I know it's real? It's like after they hit Earn Your Leisure uh, DM, then they hit Shadi. Once they start coming in my DM, now it's like, all right, yeah. this is a serious issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they hit us up, but they, what they didn't realize is that it's not, it's not our program, it's your program. And it's a stock club where you actually give people stocks to buy, like 12 stocks to buy. Yeah. Um, at different price points to buy that, different price points to sell it at. Um, stock tutorial, pretty much, like how to get up and running. Um, it's one year access to the program, monthly video reviews, uh, retirement planning model, and then one lesson a month from master investors or hedge fund, and also access to your private telegram group. So yeah. it's a whole package that I believe currently is priced at 2,500. But since the demand was so crazy, and like I said, people were just hitting us up left and right. We spoke to you. We asked, could we, you know, could you do it again? And you agreed. Um, so we're going to do it again. EYL, only for EYL. This is only for EYL. Um, so we appreciate that. 85% off. It is 347 mm -hmm. And that's for the entire year. That covers the entire year. And um, all of the information, the link is in the description of this video. Um, we'll also be putting it on our website as well, but the link is in the description of this video. All you gotta do is click the link. And if you're interested in the stock club, I think it's a 48 hour sale. So yeah, get that out the way. Cause like yeah, I got- The price is going up. So <laughs> yeah, 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 you, know, yeah, you were gracious yeah, enough, to, to, yeah. you were gracious enough to open that up for a lot of people. I know a lot of people are hitting you up as well. And um, so just to get that off the back, I had people calling me directly. So people that I actually personally know like, yo, can you please give him a call? There's a couple of people that call me, they're like, yo, can you connect me with him? I'm like, let's, let's one thing at a time, let's get this out there. I, I appreciate it. Go. Yeah, and I appreciate you guys for the love uh, for current stock members. Uh, if you're in the Telegram group, the replay that we did um, on the 11th, that's posted in the group as well, so you guys can check this out tonight as well. The, the audio quality is good too, no Teddy Riley, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. 347 for the entire year. He tells you free. I mean, I don't know how much easier it can get. He tells you which stocks to buy. It's long term. It's not get rich quick. Flip yeah, it. Not flip it. No stock. trading. No trading. Not <laughs> trading. It's long term to get you started investment. He tells you 12 stocks to buy. He also sets you up as far as like give you the, the, the platform, actually how to set up um, tutorials, all kinds of different stuff, videos. So yeah. 347, if you're interested in learning how to make money in the stock market, that's the deal. The description has the link. So and the most important thing is if you guys buy the stocks, you'll win. This is a key lesson. The people who executed right away, some of them were up on a low end, 8%, high end, 24%. One week. Right. Doesn't mean you'll do the same, but the people who executed right away, they got results. So that's a, a gem for you. Like we can't sit and ponder and think forever. Like, and uh, I was on Traps IG last night. We were talking about, like, doing due diligence. And I was like, bro, I went through 2,200 stocks to give you all these 12. Yeah. Mm. I, that was, that was There's a, good a lot of good companies out there right now. I looked at his live yesterday. We're going to get Wall Street Trap on this thing, man. Shout out to Wall Street Trap. That was, yeah. that was a dope live that he had, I'm sure. So, all right. So that's the deal. Um, let's get into this. So the stock market has had its best week 
Well, it's best two, two weeks, weeks. Two weeks uh, yeah. ending Friday since 1944, like almost 80 years. Um, it went up crazy. It, it, yeah. ended, it ended the week last Friday. It was up 700 points. So it's interesting because the economy is still bad. Unemployment mm -hmm. is, is through the roof okay. right now. 25, 25 million uh, Americans, I, I believe, are unemployed right 22. now. 22. 22. Well, this Thursday, it'll be probably 27. 22 yeah. million Americans are unemployed. But the stock market is still up crazy. But mm -hmm. then it was down today. It was yeah. down, I think, 300 points, 400 points. Uh, yeah, 400, 400. 400. Yeah. So we got we got a lot to talk about, but the first thing is what happened with oil today. <laughs> oil, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in the history of the world. Troy, you want to tell me what happened? Yeah. So pretty much, uh, oil right has gone under zero dollars for the first time ever. May futures, right? Yeah. The so people have to understand right. that the May futures, and, and maybe you can enlighten them on what May futures are. But the May futures, when I watched it, I saw it happen on CNBC. It was at zero. I got on the phone, I watched it go down to negative seven. Yeah. I watched it go down to negative 20. And I heard that the panel saying like, everything that my teachers have ever taught me in school, they lied. They said the absolute value of something after zero is nothing. How did this go down to negative $37 per barrel? Negative $37, that's crazy. Right, like how? <laughs> Basic supply and demand. So now the people that were, so remember when everyone kept asking, USO, XOM, and I'm like, first thing first, let's go back to the biggest lesson. And it's, it, it's full circle because we come back to the first interview that we did talking about futures. And everyone was like, it doesn't matter. It sets the tone for what the market is going to do. But if you go to the five-year month, crude was already sliding down since 2017. Never got back to the highs of 2007. So when everyone's like, oil is at a low, it can go lower. So for anybody that's ever traded penny stocks, you've seen this happen before. In, in 2007, when, when oil was at a time, what, what, how much were we talking? Over six, wasn't it like $60 or something like that? Yeah. But, but Ian, I, I don't want to cut you off, though, because you were yeah. about to say something. You said anybody that trades penny stocks, you've seen this happen before. So I just want people to fully understand what happened. When Troy was saying that, when the guy on CNBC said his teachers lied to him and said that in investing, like, you can't go lower than zero. That's what we're always taught. Like, if you invest money in a stock, the lowest that you can get is zero. Like, it's done at that point. But like, it can also run negative. And people don't talk about that. So, because everything works until normalcy goes away. So how that zero model is priced in is if jobs are pretty much even, employment is even, we're in a hellish situation. So what happened on that contract, there were a bunch of people who were buying and there was nobody who wanted to buy at a higher price. And now you have panic sellers saying, I want to just sell it at any, at any price. So imagine you had a house in New York worth 500,000 and now you just run out on the street and say, man, you can take my house for 2,200. And somebody said, no, 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 I'll take my house for 1500 It's driving the price down lower because expiration is tomorrow. So you have a hard and final time in which you have to get out of the market, and that will be tomorrow. But that's, that's expiration on contract. So people, yeah. and I had to find this out myself today. So a contract is the equivalent of 1,000 barrels of oil. Yep. So those contracts are going to expire for, and that's looking forward to the month of May. Yep. So right now, if somebody is buying a contract or is getting a contract, literally, they're going to be paying you to take it, right? If it's negative 37, essentially. Yeah, but the most important thing that I have to reiterate is that you have to know the direction of what you're trading. Everyone kept hoping crude was going to go up, and I'm like, how? We can't go anywhere. <laughs> right, right. But some of these Russians are still fighting. So this is, like, much bigger than trading. So when the, the powers that be cannot come to an agreement and we are at a stalemate, then things are going to slide down. So the natural tendency for oil to do is to go down. There are people who made a ton of money short in oil. I'm pretty that's sure. The, that, that's the direction that you should have been following. So USO, no. XOM, no. Not right now. It's not the time to buy it. Now, the true price of crude is at like 21. In our chat this morning, I said we were going to drop to 20 this week. We cracked 2016, I believe, and then we'll go eventually to like 19. If we can't fly, can't travel, then what's the use of crude oil right now? Yeah, that's what they were saying. Yeah. And they like, um, you know, nobody's flying, nobody's driving a car. Yeah. So oil, and this, this, this is an important lesson for people. Everything is relative, right? Yeah. It's like oil, the most sought after commodity for over a century. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. wants oil, like Saudi yeah. Arabia literally 
Saudi Arabia was nothing before they discovered that they had oil. That was only like a hundred years ago. Yeah. And now they're like one of the wealthiest countries in the world. But if oil was no longer needed, it, it has no value. Draws the value down. So now they're actually paying people, essentially they're paying people to give oil to. Yeah. So what it, yeah. it, it's a negative contract. So with that being said, um, the first the first um, thing that we're going to talk about is USO. Because yes. it's actually interesting. I'm glad that we, we were talking about USO because somebody had actually hit me on Instagram today and said, can we talk about ETFs, oil ETFs? Yeah. So US, USO is an oil ETF. Um, and this is something that is interesting because a lot of people, like, they're like it's a good time to invest in oil because it's so low right now. So USO, what's the, what's the deal with USO? USO, first thing first, this is what I want you guys to do. Anytime you, and this is, and anyone at Red Panda can tell you this in chat. The first thing I want you to do is look at the five-year month and tell me what the high was. The high was $21.50 back in 2014. $21.50 back in 2014. It has not broken. So I'm going to go back to the analogy. If you draft a player and the last time he scored his season high was in 2014, is he going to be your number one pick? No. Oil could run to zero. Mm -hmm. USO could run to zero. Because in defense first when you invest, you have to assume the worst possibility first before you assume the best. So USO has not been up for a long period of time and it's been steady sliding down. And then the Corona made everything worse. But if we are not flying, if we cannot travel, if the Saudis and the Russians cannot come to a deal, USO is not going to go up. It's not going to, anything oil related right now is not going to do well. So do we, don't invest in oil right now. My stance has been the same ever, ever since. Cruise lines, Travel related, most hotels, airlines, if we can't go anywhere, where is the supply? Yeah, and, and I was thinking even now that the seasons are changing, even home heating oil, who's using that, right? We're switching seasons, right? And also, if you guys look at natural gas, like natural gas is a feature that we trade as well. The, the natural trend for natural gas is to the downside. What I want us to stop doing is hoping something is going to go up. So I want us to be as be able to look at an asset or commodity as quickly as we can a basketball player and tell you which one has more value. LeBron has more value than you can pick who or whatever player. I won't say any players because shout out to y'all in the league. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you're the last man on the Orlando Magic, you aren't as good as LeBron. So we don't want to invest in him. Now, remember Champion at one point in the 90s was popping and then it fell off and now Champion's back doing, what, doing well. Oil will do the same thing, but not until the economy opens back up. If there is no demand for it, the price won't go up. We right. have to wait. That would be the catalyst. We have to wait. Yeah, so the, the storage is maxed. But in my mind, there must be somebody that can win at this, right? So, like, if there's somebody that is actually facilitating the storage of oil, right, because these barrels, these contracts are huge, yeah. are there companies that can actually – facilitate the storage of it? Because I'm thinking if we have a surplus, then I'm sure there's going to be people coming up with that. There'll be demand for it, but just not, just not now. We have to realize we haven't lived through a time like this before. Mm. This makes 2007 and 2008 look like a scrimmage game. <laughs> Damn. Like, and the truth is we haven't seen the worst of it. So if we have another 5 million people laid off this week, a good number will be 2.5, which is insane to say. But we'll probably have another five million. I know they're going to try to open up the economy, but I was even reading that twenty-four hour fitness may go out of business. Yeah, twenty-four. Go, yeah. Gold's gym is done. Um, New York Sports Club. Um, the, the people that own New York Sports Club. So if you're in the, on the East Coast, you know there's New York Sports Club, Boston Sports Club, Philadelphia yeah. Sports Club. All that's it's the same conglomerate. They uh, I think they filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, they're, they're headed that way. Oh, the gyms is in trouble. Yeah, yeah that's, that's trouble. an industry that nobody's really talking about, but the gyms is in trouble. And even when this thing is over, because so many people are getting used to working out inside, yes. um, the online fitness thing is booming right now. Yes. So that's an interesting situation. Zoom, if you have a question, please ask, please raise your hand. It's like a bunch of questions in the chat. Yeah. But as I said, we, we, we want to answer the Zoom questions um, video. That's the whole point of having um, access to the Zoom for EYL University members. So 
If you have a Zoom question, please raise your hand on the video and ask the video. But you know what's interesting is that you talked about the travel and we've talked about travel a lot. And cause that's a real hot thing. Everybody always asks about travel stocks. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the article today, we have a question, right? We're gonna get to you, Mike. But when I saw the article, let's 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 get to the question. Mike, the floor is yours. I'm, I'll mute your mic. I've unmuted you. Go ahead, bro. What's going on, brother? Mike, I'll unmute your mic, Mike. Unmute your microphone. Go ahead, bro. Mike. For everyone else watching, please go to the five-year month first. Even better if you go to a 20-year. It'll give you true perspective. 20, uh, in 2008, USO was at $119.17. As of now, as of this recording, it's at $3.75. Damn, that's amazing. You have to follow what the direction of the asset is. I think he's there now. Mike, Mike what's Mike, up? Mike, what's up, bro? Oh, he about to get uh, yeah, right. Mike, we got, we got, you got, you got to figure out um, how to zoom. You gotta unmute yourself. But all right, so what I was saying is that uh, it's interesting because when I read the article today in Forbes, that um, shorting, uh, shorting is is going crazy right now in the mm -hmm. stock market, and specifically um, hotels like Marriott. Uh, what else? It was a couple. It was a couple of them. Let me look. But no, it was no, nah, it, it was it was all um, travel stocks. It was. Yeah. Uh, Carnival was number one, Royal Caribbean, Marriott, and Wynn Resorts. Wynn Resorts is interesting because, and I want to get your take on this, just a personal opinion, because um, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, we was debating back and forth. He's one, he, wants to, he wants to invest in casino stocks, Wynn, MGM, <laughs> all these things. And I'm like, nobody's going back to casinos like that. Like, social distancing is not going any away. Yeah. He's like, as, soon as, as soon as people get to go back to casinos, it's going to be flooded. And I'm trying to tell him, like, that's a long-term play. Casinos is going to be hit for a long time. How do you feel about that? You guys should not look to invest in casinos or any retail, hotel-like stuff, at least until the NBA opens back up. When fans can go into the arenas, then you can look. Now, if you're willing to hold it for 10 years, everyone says they can. But when you draw down 30%, waiting for the league to open up, you're not going to want to hold it that long. Yeah, because even, even when it opens, it's still going to be under social distancing guidelines, right? Where you have, you may not have 10,000 people in a 20,000 uh, seat arena or casinos. They may have only a certain number of slot machines. They may have yeah. tickets for you to enter. It's going to be a whole situation. So, if, yeah, not, so if you look at a long term, because I know you guys in the comments are going to make certain suggestions, but if you're looking to hold five to 10 years, you're good. But anything less than a year, no. We probably, until the NBA and then Zuckerberg goes back into his office of Facebook, let those be your two sign when like CEOs actually start to go back in. You know what's, we, we got Jamal, shout out to Jamal, we're gonna bring him on a video. Um, but you know what's crazy? I saw something, and this is something that nobody's talking about. And this, this kind of lets you know the, the direction of how serious this whole Corona thing is. Facebook canceled all of their major events in the year 2021. Yep. Nobody knows that. That that didn't make no. Uh, no sense. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying is, in my mind, if Facebook is one of the largest companies in the world, these guys they know what they're doing. They got all kinds of inside information with the government and all that. Then the guy Zuckerberg is in front of Congress every week. Um, if they canceled all of their events, major events for 2021, there's what, a reason why. What does that tell you? Exactly. There's a reason why. Yep. Exactly. And. and I think the governor of California said it himself, there's there's going to be no sporting events with fans or even concerts for the rest of this year, right? There's a reason he's doing these things. And then event space has been getting killed. So if you guys can weather the storm, this is the part about investing that you don't read about in books, even in last recession, when you don't know when it's going to end, it's hard to draw down 40, 50% and still add to that position. Now, if you can hold it in three or four years, you'll look like a genius, but right now there isn't much upside to it. But if you can hold for a five year period, and it's really, and, and I'll say this too, even with the shorts, there's no such thing as a bad market. If you know how to navigate the market, you can make the money, you can make money whether it's going up or down. It takes skill set, but now isn't the time to buy wind. And I would say you would have to wait until wind gets to maybe $10.32 before you would want to take a stab at it. Anything other than that is too high. Right. Jamal, 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 what's up? What's, what's up, brother? You unmuted. The mic is yours. The floor is yours, bro. What's up? 
What's going on, fellas? What's the word? How you doing, brother? What's going on, brother? How you doing? What's going on? Ian, I wanted to have a conversation. Like you said, man, you could you could always make some money in whether it's going up or down. Uh, with this historic moment today with the um, with oil in itself, I started doing some research. Just obviously the supply has well exceeded the demand. Um, and a, a few comments that happened on MSNBC where they were saying that there's an opportunity to possibly buy some tankers stocks or shipping stock where they're kind of sitting on any aspect of a coast, depending on where you are all around the world. Would you consider getting into something like that? There was one that I was looking at that was like Scorpio, right? I mean, they're up heavy today, but I mean, make the, the, the ticker itself, Scorpio is uh, STNG, right? They're probably up uh, about 18% today, but if I look at May, I don't, I don't think us opening up in June, as far as future contracts, when it goes to oil, I don't, I don't see much of a, a big difference there, right? So is that something that you would consider doing? Like just, you know, you're pretty much just storing the, the oil that needs to be done, you know, that needs to be yeah, held. If you're willing to hold it for a couple of years, you'll be good. Um, it's okay. probably going to take, I mean, because if you look at it, in 2009, it was at $130.10. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to hold it for a couple of years. Because, like, the true value of... We probably have $15 trillion in damages. It's probably going to take two years for things to turn around. If you can hold it for two years, you have a good shot to make some good money. But you have to be honest to say, will you hold it for two years if it's getting its ass kicked and going down to 8 bucks and then 4 bucks, Will you hold it and add to it? That's a true test. Okay. Jamal, right, pre- thank you. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of people have to realize too, is that you can't chase winners. Um, like you see one stock is up 20% one day, then you buy it, then it goes down 10% when you buy it. Yep. Then you sit to your stomach and then it's like- It's you, discipline, man. Yeah, you're trying to gamble. Stop trying to gamble. Stop trying yeah. to get rich quick. This is not the, we're not here to teach you how to gamble. We are here to educate you to make long-term wealth and build yeah. long-term wealth with solid, good companies, not just... If, if, you, if you're disciplined, investing is really easy. Because you, you're going to pick a few. You're going to pick basically your starting five. You're going to rock with them. And you're going to let it run for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years and be good. And the ones we talked about originally on the first episode, like, they've yeah. sit done well. They've held their value. The yeah. ones that I said were not that good. I mean, I'm worried now the four may actually go bankrupt. Say that again. Ford, 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 Ford Michael Bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Every car company, the car company's been in trouble though. They've been in trouble for a long time. So, Ian, you want you want to you want to do this? They said I wasn't enthusiastic. Like uh, we got a breaking news alert. Breaking news alert, yo, Ian. We have over eight hundred and fifty people on YouTube checking us in, plus oh, the really about good. seventy people that are on our Zoom chat right now. So that's breaking news alert. And I was gonna say, if anybody's been on Market Mondays already, y'all know how Ian feel about Ford. I ain't gonna let him start. Killing it again. Yeah, that's 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 so that's that's how we, we, we broke breaking news alert. Previous number was 700. It. Now we got 850. So each each week it gets bigger and bigger. I'm oh telling you, we're gonna make so this the biggest show. We're gonna make this the biggest stock show on YouTube. Thank you. Biggest got, stock show, period. Not just YouTube. We got period. a question from Charm. Charm, what's going on? Charm, how are you? Yeah, unmuted. Unmute yourself. Charm, how are you? Charm. What's the deal? So I'm not oh, ready. Gotta go to Mike. Mike, what's up? Mike Norris. What's up, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We hear you loud and clear, bro. Uh, yeah, my question is for Ian. So I, I've been told that when when oil goes down, gold goes up. So would buying into gold be a good thing right now? It's a little bit high, but with the correlation that you've been told is absolutely true. It's been true. So if you're already in gold, continue to hold it. Um, wait maybe about another week because you don't want to buy it at a high, but gold would be a good play for, for you to have as a commodity that will run up. And the same thing is true. Like if our market goes down, gold will go up as well. Gold has had a very good run um, since 2019, early 2019. It's still on a good tear. It's still on a good tear. Great, great question. That was a great question. Great, great, great question. Before we break another question, so well, I think, Tom, is that you? Yes. Right. Sean, how you doing? Sean, what's going on? We was looking for you. I hate you now. What's going on? Shout out to MG, the mortgage guy on the, on the super chat check-in. Appreciate you, bro. Shout out, Matt. 
How you doing, brother? Charm, how you, Charm, how you doing? Hi guys, I wanted to know how do you feel about online gaming um, companies? One in particular is P E N N. P E M N. N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy. Uh, if you can catch it at six bucks, six seventy three. I would take a shot at it. Overall, I don't like it, but if you get it at a good enough price, if the economy stays stagnant the way that it is, it could have an upswing, and I'd probably get rid of it around like 20 bucks flat. Um, the long-term chart, I don't like a lot, mm -hmm. but if you get it at, at a good price, uh, you'll be able to make some coin off of it. I wouldn't hold it five years, but yeah, you can make some money off of it. The on online game is something we spoke about last week, right? When we talked about Activision, just because we yeah. know that a lot of people are home, we know that this is a generation, and I come from that generation too, of, of playing video games. And now the online gaming, you could actually make some real money doing it. Yeah. Um, so there is something to, to pay attention to. Thank you, Sean, for um, chiming in. Thank you. Before we go to another question, I just wanted to do a little halftime break uh, for anybody that just joined, because I know we got almost 900 people in here right now. So well, uh, nice. once again, Ian Stock Club. So these questions, we um, try to save your individual stock questions. Um, for offline because um, it's the interest of time. We want to kind of keep this under an hour, but that's why we're going to, we, we pick three stocks that we're going to run through and um, answer like general investment questions. Like that gold question was a really good question. Uh, but so what we're doing once again, Ian, it was gracious enough to do a collaboration with us for EYL um, for our whole community. He has a stock club. Ian has a stock club where he actually tells you 12 long-term picks to buy. So it's a whole year thing. And it's twenty five hundred dollars, but he's discounting it eighty five percent for forty eight hours, and that is only for earning your leisure. And it's three hundred and forty seven dollars for the entire year. He tells you which stocks to buy, where to buy it at, where to sell it at. Um, he, he it's monthly uh, videos, it's videos, monthly um, lessons from a master investor, a hedge fund manager, um, access to a private tele Telegram group and um, all the information that you need to begin investing, like how to set up an investment account, which brokerage is the best. So if you're interested and you're serious about investing, he has one of the best platforms that I've ever seen um, in my 12 years in the financial services industry. And um, it's $347 for two days only. The link is in the description of this video. I also put this link in the chat right now. I just put it so, in. So yes, I just put it in YouTube. Once, it's right there. Yeah. Once again, thank you for that, brother. We appreciate it. So we got to go to. We got more questions, or we can uh, go we, to, uh, we had somebody. Marietta was there, but she raised. She put her hand down. We, right, we let, gonna keep rolling. Yeah. Let, let's go. All right. Let's go to our next stop. Um, e R O S. So this is an interesting company. This is an Indian movie company. When I did some research, I found out. I'm not even sure. I'm sure you probably do know. Um, a few days ago, it made it, it was crazy because it went up 42% and then yeah. it fell 23% in one day. In one day, it went up 43% and fell 23% in one day. So what what is the deal with EROS? You guys have to realize, and then I can't wait to compare it to the third stock that we have lined up for tonight. But this is what I don't want you guys to get caught up in. And this happened last week with TripAdvisor. When a lot of these companies run up 40, 50, 60% in one day, Usually a bunch of penny stock clubs are driving the price up. And by the time you run to them and they're up 30%, you're like, oh man, this is the play of the year. They are exiting and you're left holding the bag. Mm. Before today, not, put your hands up or type yes in the comments if you ever heard of this company. I and going back to the same point, the top companies are going to perform. And they so this is no different than like, let's say, the 200th best player in the NBA scoring 55 in the garden. It's like dope. The next game, he's not going to get 55. It's going to be a flash in the pan. So like you want to invest with companies that are going to do well over and over and over again. And yes, it was a great spike. But if you look back at the same thing, everyone in chat and everyone who watched on the replay, I want you to go to the five year chart first. Yeah. Where the Robin Hood, Yahoo Finance, the price before was 39 bucks. That's the high. It's now at $2.50. 250. 250. Like when, when, when that came across, I was like, yo, I've never heard. It. I did the research. I'm like, this indie 
uh, film company. But a lot of people like, to me and DMing me about it, like, what you think about it? And I'm like, please don't buy it. <laughs> so you guys can save a lot of, if you hit that five year first, you want the value of the company to go up. You don't want it to slide down. Because if it's sliding down, the chances of it going up when you buy it is very low. And if you haven't heard of the company, please don't invest in it. Please don't. I'm glad you said that because that's something I learned early on. A lot of times we make it way more complicated than it needs to be is look at past performance. And even yeah. I talk all the time, even with your 401ks, the easiest way to kind of pick a, a good fund is to look with the 10-year or since its inception. Um, yep. since inception is like when it was created. So yep. something has performed at an extremely high level for 10 years. So if it's, if it's averaged 12% a year for 12 years, odds are it'll continue to perform at a high level, right? It's just it like awesome. sports. Like if somebody has averaged 25 points for 10 seasons, then, you know, they're going to be a Hall of Fame player, right? Like that's yeah. a lot of, but you can just have a great year and be a flash in the pan. So yes. that's the same thing with stocks. If, if somebody's chart looks like this, like for yeah. seven years and they just have a spike, it's like, yeah. and that's yeah. why, like not to keep harboring on a Boeing, Boeing situation, but that's why I was so confident Boeing's a good company. It's, it's, it's been rising for a very long period of time. It's like time. 300 and something dollars a few months ago. It's yeah. long-term chart. Scalability looks Most likely. likely. Yeah. When it dropped to, it's like you can, you can make an educated guess that it's going to go back. But if something is just consistently like this for five years, no that's, not, that's not a good chart. Yeah. Yeah, can you, you we, we kind of spoke about TripAdvisor, and I'm not sure if everybody's familiar. Oh, break, breaking news alert. So we got another breaking news, 900. 900 is the new number. 900 is the new number. And let's run this up to 1,000. Let's run this up to 1,000. Tell your friend to tell a friend to call somebody. We're running these numbers up crazy. Let's right run now. them up. So TripAdvisor, we spoke spoke about it over the phone, but it went up 499% or something crazy like that. Can you even tell us what happened there? And, how because we know trip advisor i mean i mean even the company said they didn't know why the volume was so high and why the, the volatility increased so much so what happens like you have like these mobs of penny stock traders that will run and for those of you like that are in them or if you like familiar with like tim sykes and that group a lot of them will run those companies up so they can take profit now here's the thing that you have to realize investing is not fair so if you're undisciplined and you chase something and you lose when you lose, somebody else wins. So you have to be very disciplined. So if something takes off and rises faster than Apple did in the last two years, it's not gonna last. So be very careful. Careful For those of you that are trading, I will tell you it's okay to chase them if it's in your plan, but you still need a designated target when you're gonna get out. So once you're up 25%, 50%, 100%, close out, take profit and let it run. Cause I was talking to a few people and I'm like, you need to short. And they didn't short it because they're like, oh, I think it's going to go up. And then it fell down. So what, more than anything, I want to coach you guys to have like a system to be able to evaluate any stock in less than one minute. Always hit that five-year month first, and you'll see what the true value is. That you know, that reminds me of, that reminds me of um, the crypto days. No, I was just going to say that. That reminds bro. me of the crypto days. They used to have these groups. They used to have these groups. The more and more I'm looking at this stock market, it's every day thing. it's the same thing man it's crazy those it's whales like, used to drive the, us crazy the, the crypto used to be a, i used to see a coin go up 7200 percent 7200 percent in yeah. one day and then and then it would drop like and they would they was just they was just driving it up pump and dump it's called it's a pump, pump and dump, and dump so they yeah. pump and dump it and to see that happen in a regulated stock market is disturbing triple no. it or, it's Human nature is going to be feast or famine. So now you have people that have been experts who have been trading every day, and now a bunch of people want to, so like the Barstool CEO jumps in, a bunch of athletes are starting to jump in. So now you have more volume, and it's like me going to the league and be like, okay, let me play in the finals day one. You're, that's why I preach consistency and discipline and having your process down, because you're going against sharks Day one, there is no such thing as a bad market. Like what you do, because here's the funny thing. When people made money on crypto, they didn't cry about it. Nope, not at all. When it's time to go down, because you guys thought it was going to go to the moon and go to 100,000 and all that other bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, to the moon, you, you was in that space if you know to the moon. To, to the moon, that was, that was the vibe, that was the vibe. That was the emoji for sure. It would be great, but it's not going to. So when I say a company is trash, I just mean, 
that the value has fallen. Because some of you be like, well, you can short it. But if you don't have your retirement, like, let's say you get injured or hurt, or let's say you're tired or you have kids, you don't have the time to trade every day. You need to have some money working for you. Regardless of how much money you make from trading, you need to have some assets making money for you without you having to do anything. All right, we got Sam on the on a, uh, Zoom call. Sam, you are unmuted. The floor is yours. The mic is yours. Go ahead. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Hey, what's good, fellas? Everything good? So, right. my, I'm good, man. Appreciate it. Uh, my question is in regards to IPOs, right? Because I heard you, Ian, say a few times to, to evaluate a stock. You want to look at five years out to 20 years if you can. But yeah. with IPOs, you can't look back that far. So would you even get into IPOs? And, and if it is something that you would get into, how would you go about evaluating that? Good oh, question. Great. Good question. Good question. Um, th so this is a little bit more fundamental driven. You need to look at the either the angels that invested in the company, the VC firms, because that will tell you the track record. So think of a VC as a record label and the startup as an artist. So I want to see what history the VC has, who they take in public, and then how long have those companies been successful in the public market, and then you have to go to management. So like if the CEO or the founder of that startup has been involved in another startup and has done well, that's another reason why I love Elon. Elon was a co-founder of PayPal. He's done well, so has Mark Andreessen. They've been doing well since 99. So you can, there, like, there are clues there. If an entrepreneur is good, their next venture usually is good. So you have to go more fundamental. So look at the VC, the VC first, look at the angels involved, and you have to look at the management and founding team okay. to see what's Great successful. question, Sam. Yeah, great that, question. That was a great question. Thank you, Sam. That was a great question. Um, we're going to go to Palau. Oh, wait, before we go, um, so for anybody that's wondering, like, the difference, the Zoom is for EYL University members. Um, and we actually are running a code on that too. EYL 149, 60% off. If you want to become an EYL university member, have access to our private Facebook group, real estate Facebook group, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll put the information in here. But um, we appreciate all the EYL university members in the building. Here strong. And, and the price is going up May 1st. <laughs> Breaking price, news alert. Yeah, the price, <laughs> price is going up. Price is going up May 1st. Bilal sure. Cobra, strong first name. Bilal, good name, good name. <laughs> Bilal, what's up? You're unmuted. The floor is yours. The mic is yours, bro. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good. How you doing, brother? Good. Damn, quick question, man. Uh, just looking at the market, watching, obviously, I work in the industry and watching for a while, but it feels like the market is kind of detached from, like, fundamental analysis. I just wanted to kind of get your take and see kind of what you think. You know, obviously, 22 million people are unemployed, going to be 27 this this week. Uh, everything else going on, you know what I mean? It's it, The market continues to go up. You know, when, when fundamentally it should, should certainly be going down right now. You work in the finance industry, right? I do. So, you know, after the bloodbath that the hedge funds had and the family offices had, they have to produce something in order to keep them clients on board, right? Yeah. So in combination with quantitative easing, I'm not going to say you should throw fundamentals out of the window, but we're seeing a lot more funds crank up the algorithms a lot more and they're getting in, in and out of the market a lot faster so they can produce a return because they got killed last quarter. So we are detached from reality. Cause even, and I, and I made the joke today when I was uh, talking in chat, I'm like, it's interesting that when a jobs report comes out, we're probably going to shoot up on the S and P 500, which we should be diving down 5% every time five and 6 million job losses are reported, but we're, we're spiking up. I felt exactly. I, I had this conversation today, um, um, Ian, and I was like, I feel like I'm watching the big short. Like, pretty much, it's not none of this is making sense to me. Does yeah. not, you know, yeah. what I'm, saying? I, I'm with you on that. So, that's yeah. why when I was scanning all those companies, um, I literally did a review of the Dow, I think, two weeks ago, and I think there was like five valuable companies in the SP that may have been 15 out of oh. the entire basket there. So, like, this is kind of like 07, but a little bit worse because of the global effect and how deep, because we're not even in the depths of it yet. Mm -hmm. um, so now we just have to follow grade A, quote unquote, blue chip companies, and then wait for the dust to settle. And then we can see, because I know everyone thinks, well, I can do MGM and win again, but I'm like, this isn't a residential or real estate crisis. That's what made those a great buy. This is like something we've never seen before. So now we have to dig into the crates a little bit more and find some good companies to invest in, but we are literally living in a movie. Nothing is making sense. 
but we yeah. have to have discipline. Even for my long-term investors, if you guys start to draw down 15 to 20%, you may have to cut the position and re-enter so you don't draw down 50% of your portfolio. And I know there's a quote from Munger, if you're not willing to take a haircut of 50%, but we don't have the pockets that Charlie have. I don't want to take a 50% loss on my portfolio on anything. So, so, so Ian, are you thinking it's going to be a W recovery or what are we looking at? Yes. I mean, and the thing is like we, we bounced up well, but we're going to slide back over the next two or three weeks. I think we're going to have a hard pullback. They'll print some more money and then we'll start to slowly go back up. It kind of reminds me of like the post.com crash um, where we're going to battle how we bounce up really hard and we're going to slowly go back up. And I get they want to open back up the economy for financial reasons, but for health reasons, it won't be good. It's going to be a slow recovery to the upside. All right. So hold on to my shorts. <clears throat> yes. My short positions. Yeah. <laughs> my short positions. I was shorted yeah. like three weeks ago. Worst yeah. time you possibly yeah. could short. Yep. Hold on to him. I uh, appreciate you, Bilal. Appreciate you, bro. Hey. For anybody, I just want to say, he says it's going to be a W recovery. So this is some um, technical, um, if uh, yeah, analysis for you guys. So yeah. it's a V shape, V. So that means like, okay, it starts up here, it goes down, then it goes yeah. back. The W, when you, hear, when you hear somebody say it's a W recovery, that means about the letter. it goes down and then it comes back. But if you look at a W, like a du the, the comeback is never higher than when it originally started. So it goes down, like right now, it would be like, um, like it's like 4,000 points lower than what when it was at, at 29,000, it's like 23,000 like that. Mm -hmm. So then it would go back down and then it would go back up. Go back so, up, yep. Half of it, knowledge is power, and just you know, it's like it's like any other foreign language. When you start to familiarize yourself with the lingo and start to understand different things, that's what we want to do here as well. Is try to you know break it down it and just yeah. kind of get you guys familiar with the terminology of how you know investors and people in the financial industry talk, and that that'll help you um, become more confident. Yeah, shout out to Giovanni. On the uh, super chat, appreciate that. Appreciate and shout out to everybody it. on YouTube. We just went over a thousand. In your day, we over a thousand, 1, 000, bro. 1, 000. One thousand, one thousand. On a awesome. Monday at six, bro. That's love. That's, that's love. love. That's real love. That's appreciate real love. all the love. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, our earners are in here crazy. This is like, I'm no, I'm gonna try to get to your hands. Chris, what's up? I'm unmuting you. The mic is yours, and the floor is yours, one, bro. One thousand. Thank you. I was um, interested and knowing what your thoughts are on investment clubs. Um, if you know the person that runs them, yes. And, and um, you trust them with it, yes. You still need to go through your own process because the thing about investment clubs, are sometimes they lean on one person for all advice and insight and we all can be wrong. So I would say, let's say if there's 12 of you, you need to have one process for how you evaluate a company so it's not up to this, the discretion of one person. Everyone's making a decision. And if it matches these parameters, then you can buy. Because right, that would make it a lot easier. It takes it. So even with me, this isn't about my personal feelings. I'm evaluating what the price is. Because even for me, when I saw that the market went up, when we had jobless claims that were at record numbers, I was confused as hell. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but the most important thing is have a process that you can write down on a sheet of paper or explain to a five-year-old for how you're gonna pick a stock, and then you guys all have to agree. And if so, uh, it can be one of the greatest accountability groups that you have to, to help your financial uh, future. Thank you. We're gonna answer, shout, shout out to um, Caleb. Caleb. Um, Kate, shout out to Caleb Plant. Shout out to Caleb um, Bryson, but Caleb Plant's a big supporter. He's a, you know who he is? Yeah, boxer. He's a, he's the undefeated, Champ. undisputed champion boxer. Um, Vegas. Big That's supporter, amazing. big supporter of EYL University. Yeah. Um, so, I think I can answer this, but they said, does Red Panda Group cover call and trade inputs? No, right? No, um, some of them do, but if you if you guys have experience, yes, if you're a beginner, no, because the future market and options market are hand in hand. So like, if you're able to short futures, that would be put in options. And if you go long in futures, you will be able to do a call. So when I'm talking, I'm trying to keep it condensed for a person who does not know, but for my technical traders, you can look at the charts and see exactly what I'm saying. Cause like the S and P is bouncing up now, but if oil remains low, earnings end up terrible. Like IBM earnings was not that good. S and P is going to slide back down. Gold is going to go back up. Bonds is going to go back up. So if you guys take a look at the bonds market, it'll tell you which way um, the market is headed. And also if you turn on CNBC before the open, 
they're going to tell you what the implied open is. So this is cheat code for my traders. Mm-hmm. Turn on CNBC, listen to Carl Quintanilla, and whenever they tell you the Dow future is set to open 400 points below, start to look for your shorts. It's not that complicated. Like, they're going to tell you pre-market which direction the market should go. Now, you have to have your targets in place, keep your risk in place. But once you know direction, if you can wait for your spot, you're golden. You know, that, that's something that's something that I just started doing recently. Like, this year is to, to check the uh, the after hours trading. And yeah. um, I just started checking futures, like, this year. Like after our interview with you, yeah, pretty much, and I started to see like the direction of the market. And I'm like, this is kind of a cheat code because yeah. you know what I'm saying at nighttime at, at 12 o'clock at night, you could already kind of tell. Sometimes it goes down and it comes back up crazy. Back up, yeah. part, you can tell the direction of the market the next day before yeah. the day starts. And that's something that a lot of people don't aren't aware of either. Like you can actually the market technically never really stops trading. It just yeah. stops trading yeah, for the people, the regular people like us. Yeah. <laughs> like, put it, it was something I didn't know until I got heavy into it. And I'm like, you can trade at night. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay. That's some people like, well, do you day trade? I'm like, that's why I said short term investing because I'm like, the market, I can trade the London session. I can trade the London session. I'm like, Tokyo. Global, the global economy allows us to take trends. And it is no different than eBay or. PayPal or Fashion Nova who dropped that, that fire ad like as soon as everybody got the stimulus check. Like, commerce <laughs> is 24 hours. It's a big fact. So if, if you think the market is going to slow down and close when we get off work, that's not how the world works. The engine is always running. I just want to second what he said about us watching uh, CNBC. I'm telling you, now that obviously there's no sports in this downtime, like, rather than watching Sports Center, I'm CNBC and Yahoo Finance, man. Yeah. It's just a shift, man. So that's like one of the benefits of having this time. Morgan, you've been waiting so patiently. And James, I see you. We coming to you. Morgan, we're going to go you, to you first. Um, you are unmuted. The floor is yours and so is the mic. Make sure you unmute yourself. What's going on, fellas? Can y'all hear me? Yep. What's going on? What's up, bro? Not um, much. I had a question. Um, I am a part of the, the stock plan that, that he has with Panda. Okay. And so I was, I was just wondering, because this is all new to me, so by the time that I had my, my stock account open and funded, I missed a lot of the prices that he told us to get in at. And um, like, I don't have the problem with the discipline or the emotional buying or selling. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how and when, I guess, is, is where I'm still struggling. The price is going to come down to the areas that I call. So w- what happens in a market, like we'll run up and then we have a volatile push up. We're going to have a pullback. And then it'll go to the prices that we want. Until then, I want you to sit and do nothing because I don't want you to take a gamble. Like gambling is when you don't have a process to be able to win more often than not. Um, But if you need me anytime, just hit me on Telegram. But this week, we'll have some opportunities to get in. Because any investor that's ever been in Apple, and I I heard the same thing in January, the market keeps running up, I'm never going to be able to get in. And then February and March happen. So trust me, like the market moves down every single month. And we had a great push up, partly because of expiration um, over the last month. It's going to come back down to the areas that we want. Okay, so so we will see at least some of what you, those prices that we had, you had already mentioned and told us to get into. Yes. Okay, so I'm good. Yeah, all right. I, I, a, a lot of long-term investing, and even in trading, for all of my Red Panda family, you guys know this because I beat this into your head to death. Sometimes, even when you day trade, you may have to wait two hours for a good spot to get in. So when you're looking for an investment, like even when Trap was on, he said he had waited, I think, two or three months for Chipotle to come down to the price that he wanted. So but when you know that price, you're hunting and you're on a stakeout, you have to wait for that spot. Because if you do, then you'll be able to see a quick increase of 7%, 8%, 15%. And that's how you can start to beat some of the average returns that you hear about between 8 and 12%. The mistake happens when people jump in too late or anywhere. And then like, man, I hope it works out. I don't want you to hope. I want you to know an exact price that you want to get in. And is that Fibonacci curve, that tool, is that only available on the one that you showed us on, or is that on other platforms? It's on other platforms as well. You, can, If you go to the advanced settings, uh, even if you go to like tradingview.com, which is free, you can use them there. Perfect. Appreciate okay. you, Morgan. Appreciate Thank you. you. So what, what Morgan was referring to, if anybody has just came in, um, 
Ian has a stock club where he actually tells, he gives 12 stocks for long-term holdings, not buy and flip, long-term holdings. And he provides um, the stock club with prices to buy them at and prices to sell it at, along with monthly calls and videos and um, a whole uh, information about how to actually set up you know, your investment account, a um, whole bunch of stuff, access to the private telegram group. So his stock club is usually $2,500. And he's discounting it for earning your leisure since, you know, we have this great partnership now with Market Mondays uh, for 48 hour, 48 hour sale, 85% off is 347 for the entire year. And that actually includes, he like tells you like which stocks to buy and yeah. where to buy it at, where to sell it at. As I said, along with videos, along with help as far as heading, how to set up your account um, and monthly um, calls and, whole bunch of stuff, Telegram group. I mean, and the most important thing is the winners. Like in this market, it's really hard to grab what, like we're in like the finals of the market right now. Like the true great quality companies are rising and the ones that are mediocre and great, I mean, or not great, they're falling apart. So I'm going through all the research, unless you guys want to sit up and go through 2000 stocks on your own on a Friday and Saturday night, let me do the work for you and then take advantage of the deal. And for those of you who already took advantage of it, thank you. For those of you who got in, I mean, some people are 15%, 18%. And that, that's why I tagged them on Instagram. Like, you can go talk to them and ask them. But they're showing their actual account, and they're up 14 15% in two yeah. weeks. Like, that's incredible. And the, the link the link is in the description of this video. We also put it in the comments. So the, know, yeah. the description of this video, we put it in the comments. Um, shout, shout out to Dom. Dom. Obviously, he was listening to Trap. He said he waited for years. I remember he said that. He waited for years yeah. just to get it back at that price. So yeah. Shout out to Dom. We see you on, on, on YouTube. We're going to do a legendary situation up here with, uh, with, with you and Wall Street Trap. But we're going to... That's, go, that's on the way. That's going yeah, to that's that's that. be a, a 10,000 situation. James, I'm, you've been patiently waiting, bro. I'm, I'm muting you. The floor is yours. The mic is yours. Go ahead, bro. James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we hear you, James. Yeah, yeah. Speak a little louder. Yeah, man. What's up, man? Good afternoon. What's, What's going on, bro? I like, I like that picture. Make it look at the chart. Hey, so I'm self-employed, and I just recently made my 2019 contribution to my Roth. It's still sitting in cash right now. Is there, like, some markets that I could just throw it in right now and forget about it since it's super long term? Or would you recommend I kind of, like, uh, pick a couple of these stock picks um, and take advantage of this huge coronavirus dip. Yeah, good, good question. Retirement plan question. I really take some of start with the retirement picks first. Yeah, good. yeah, great, great question. I really you invest in the retirement picks. I don't want you to buy at any price, so I still want you to be calculated upon your first entry, so you get a good price because that will determine. Like if you buy at a high, you're gonna have to pray that it goes up 10% in your favor. You don't want to do that. Wait for the market to slide, which it will some this week. I'll give you a precise entry, then hold it, and then you'll be good. You don't want to be sloppy because you don't want to have any guesswork involved. So oh. I'm not um, going to hope that we break an all-time high. I want to buy when it's like a 10% drop or an 8% drop, get in there, so I at least have that cushion of 8 to 10% in there. For long-term, thank you, Jane, appreciate it. For long-term investing in, for Roth IRA people, IRA people, um, is it is it is it beneficial just to throw the money in an index fund? Throw the money in a good. Do you like mutual funds? Are you? I, I don't. I, I like them better than nothing. So for black people that don't invest, I would rather you do a mutual fund than nothing. Because most often when we get to retirement, we don't have enough, and we depend on our kids. And because we didn't teach our kids, our kids don't have enough to take care of us. So I like it better than nothing. But if I have to pick between an index and a mutual fund, I'm going to pick the index fund because the fee ratio is lower. So do you, is it a good idea to just put something in a mutual fund or index fund and just, just let it rock and don't worry about like that since, it's, since you're not going to touch the money for 20, 30 years? Yeah, you, you have to. I mean, and, and you know this, investing advice is really easy. It's hard to get people to do it. Mm. Like if you just like, imagine if, an uncle or a cousin would have got you guys a brownstone 30 years ago in New York, what the value of that would be now. Things could have been done and even started smaller. And that's why, like, I, I know you guys sometimes get tired of me saying the same thing, but I'm like, if you, these are winning, why deal with anything else? 
Because as humans, we want excitement. We want variety. I'm like, I want wins. I can get variety and excitement elsewhere. Like, I want consistent winners over and over and over again. And if they start to bleed too much, I want to cut them off at a certain point and then re-enter and, and be okay. So, but yeah, if you guys are holding for 20 or 30 years, I'd rather you do a mutual fund than nothing, but I prefer indexes. We got Sam, you got your, a question. I'm going to unmute you. The floor is yours. Sam, make sure your mic is, there you go. Sam, what's up? It was good, man. So I'm I want to go back a little bit to what uh, I think it was Morgan, what he was talking about, because I'm new to this thing. And after hearing about this deal that he is putting on, after I get off the Zoom, I'm, I'm going to jump over and, and get that deal. Um, but he was talking about he missed the the price that you told him to get in at for those different stocks that I was talking about. Are y'all like setting limits or y'all going in and doing like market prices or how, how is he missing it or how can you catch it? I prefer, I prefer limits. If you have more experience, if we get a significant enough drop, I'm okay with the market order in certain cases, but more often than not, I want like a precise entry and then so I can estimate what your gains should be. Because if like if Apple, like Amazon, for example, when Amazon was hitting all time highs last week, I was telling everyone, don't buy the all time high. And people were like, I'm gonna get it anyway. I'm like, you're gonna cry next week. So there are exact price areas that I want you to be able to get in. And then if the price is missed, you still have to wait for it to come back to that price. Because like if I sell you a house that you know is worth 350, you you shouldn't buy it off of me off five for five hundred and fifty thousand, no matter what's in it. The house is worth three fifty. So if, it, if somebody else buys it for five fifty, you got to go to another neighborhood and wait for it to come back in your price range, so you can be um, like a very calculated investor. That way, you don't have to guess whether the market is going to go up in your favor or not. Appreciate right, it, cool. Sam. Thanks, Sam. All right, so now we got to go into the last one. This is a big one. This is a big one. This is the last love, stock. I love this. That one. we're going to talk about. This is something that everybody is familiar with. This is the big one. We saved the we saved the biggest and the best for last. Let's do it. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix is on fire right now. A tech company that, oh man, we don't gotta say what Netflix is. Everybody yeah. understands. I, I, I'll give you the numbers from March 25th, right? Like this is like pre-stages of, of the, the shutdown. They were trading at $342, they are now at $437. They on fire. And I think yeah. the, the, the reasons we can see are pretty obvious. A lot of people are at home. A lot of people are consuming the content. Their earnings are coming out. Is it tomorrow or is it tonight? I believe tonight, but don't quote me on that because I don't want them to kill me in the comments. <laughs> so don't quote me. Let, let, let's get into Netflix, man. So in comparison to Air Arrows, everyone has heard of Netflix. So this goes, Jamal, thank you. So this goes back to now, it's too high to buy right now. So at 437, 435, don't buy because the previous high areas that it went to before. 449, 52 week high, 449. Yeah, 449. Before it's, just, it's just short of its 42, 52 week high. Week high, yeah. So, and then another area of resistance for my more technical trade, this is like 421 and 420. You got to wait for it to pull back. But Netflix is, a, uh, of course, because of Corona, the value of it has went up. People are, are consuming more content and then subscription um, rates have increased in which people are actually paying for the service. So wait for it to pull back. Compare that versus EROS and look at the direction of the chart. You guys always, always, always look at the five year month first. Five years ago, it was at $78.89 and it's taken off to the upside. So I would rather you buy quality at a higher price than to buy garbage at a cheaper price and hope that it's going to go up. But what is $78 five years ago and now it's $437 now. That's why I tell you, for those of you who are looking to flip, the five years is the flip that you want. Tech, and it goes back to the original conversation we had on the podcast. Half index, half tech. Tech is the only sector that is going to keep value almost no matter what, because people don't have to leave their homes for it. And then on a B2B play, a lot of them like Microsoft and Apple are going to do well on business to business. Apple also gives you international exposure um, as well. So Netflix, home run. Can you talk about the strategy of releasing their earnings after hours? Like Jamal said, it's tomorrow. They're going to release it after trading. Can you talk about the strategy in doing that? You know, sometimes if it comes out midday and if the, if the numbers aren't good, then it can be chaos and then the short sellers can go a little bit crazy. So there's a couple of different reasons that uh, people like to do that or protect themselves, if you will. But 
the numbers should be. I mean, I'm sure the estimated numbers will be posted in the morning. They 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 should be fine. I'll say that. You know, Netflix is interesting because I actually thought that they was going to be in trouble. We talked about Netflix on the podcast a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Netflix is one of those companies that has tremendous debt, too much debt, very low profit margin, yep. and um, they getting bombarded with competition from Disney streaming service, mm-hmm. um, HBO streaming NBC, service, NBC's launching theirs next week, Amazon, the 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 giant, the the the, the giant in all arenas, Amazon. And a lot of people thought that Netflix might not be able to survive this, um, being that Netflix is interesting. Netflix spends more money on original content than any other TV network in the world. Yeah. Any, ABC, yeah. NBC, CBS, they spend more money on original content than anybody else in the world. Yeah. And like I said, they have very um, thin profit margins. And when Amazon came in and then Disney came in and all of these, all of these companies came in, a lot of people felt that Netflix was going to get squeezed, but they're still chugging along. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot to that though, right? They spend a lot on it. And we, we did this case study and we did it with a class too, with our students. The case study was showing like they put out so much original content because they lease most of the content that they yeah, have. Yeah. So a lot of those leases yeah. are going to come up now that you see the NBC's putting out the, the uh, Pitchcock network and HBO's getting their content back. Disney, it's starting to take some of the, those contracts haven't run out yet. So you're starting to see that that's happening. So that's the reason why they invest so much. That, when we talk about doing research on a company, you got to go in depth, seeing why these things are happening. Yeah, and they still have too much debt for my personal liking, but this is a, so you guys have to realize in any disaster, there are people that get hurt and there are people that profit. Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, they're all been victors in this economy. Cruise lines, hotels, event space, it's been decimated. Zoom, done great. So some people are going to feast and some are gonna go through famine stages. I still do not like how much debt Netflix have, but if you compare their chart and compare it to EROS, there's a clear difference in what you want a, a chart to look like that you're gonna invest in. And Netflix still has room to grow. It's not in every country. Right, like somebody was like, "Yo, they they got um the la- um last dance, which is true in every country except the United States. Like, we can't watch it. We got to watch it every Sunday. Yeah. Other countries that have Netflix, they can stream the entire ten part series. So it's good to know that they still have room to grow because they haven't hit every continent yet. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was uh, a pleasure. It was a record breaking one. A pleasure. Oh, yeah. before we before we go before we go, we gotta do a couple of different things. First of all, we gotta thank you for. This is, this is, this is, I got a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. I want to talk about short selling, but I'm going to save it. I want to save it. We can't, we, we can't, we can't let everything out the bag. Oh, we, got a, we, got a, we, got a, we got one more question. We got a question. Hold on. I'm going to let you do the name. <laughs> Sh- Sh- uh, Shakana. I hope I got that right. You got to say it with confidence. I did. I did. I hope I got it right. And, and I'm going to go with that. Shakana, what's up? The floor is yours. You have been unmuted. Make sure you unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Did I get it right? No. <laughs> what, is it? what is it? What is it? It's Shakana. Oh, Shikana. I got it right. There we go. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. <laughs> so I have a question. I am new to investing, and I just joined EY University this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the club. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So the question is: There are a lot of people um, selling different programs to learn how to invest long-term investing trading. How do you know what program to go with? And then Ian, to you, how much money do you need if I were to do the the deal, which is an awesome deal, how much money would I need to start and be successful with your program? Uh, I'll answer the second question first and thank you for the question, I appreciate it. This is one of my favorite ones to answer. Um, So start with the minimum of 500, if you can. If you have less than that, you can probably do one share for like 250. If you can't do that, I would just say, just hold off and save the money. Um, as far as a bunch of people offering different programs and services. So like, do your research, hop on Google, um, type in their name, see what they've told you to invest in before. Go through their social media. So like my, all my, like I gave away my picks away for years before I even sold them. So you go do your research on me and see if you liked, like what you see from the people that have worked with me. And then lastly, go with your gut. 
if it feels right as a woman that you should do something with me, do it. If not, don't do it. Like I'd rather you stand still and do nothing and me build a relationship with you and be comfortable than you jump now and then have a regret later. As far as trading stuff, the three most important questions you have to ask a person is, do you trade for a living? Can Do you have a live account? And will you log on to Zoom or go to a meeting and show me your live account? Because there's a lot of people that talk about trading that can't trade. And sadly enough, there's a ton of people who talk about trading who don't even have a real account that are in demo. So that is a litmus test for that. But just go with your intuition and then do your due diligence. And if it feels right, hop on board. And if not, I'll, I'll be here in a year or two, five years, 10 years. <laughs> Thank you. So, Nana, thank you so thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Welcome. Um, the people are asking for it. Man. All right. So once again, people are saying, like, I just joined. I'm in California. So if you just joined, we started this at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So but after this, the good thing with YouTube is that after the live is done, it's saved. So if you missed any part of it, make sure you watch the whole thing in its entirety. A lot of gems was dropped. EYL, we got a special um, run going. Ian was kind enough to lower his stock program from $2,500 to 347 for the entire year. And um, it's a stock club. So he actually tells you um, 12 long-term stock picks, like long-term, like these are the stocks to buy. This is the price point to buy it at. This is the price point to sell it at. But even better than that, he actually um, has information on how to set up your investment account. He has information on um, a variety of different topics that you get videos to. Um, it's once a, once a month calls access to the uh, Telegram group. So it's, it's an ongoing support, investment support, um, educational support for one entire year. And that is for the cost of 347, 48 hour only yeah, sale. That's 85% off. Yeah, it's, it's in conjunction with EMPIL because yeah. we did it two weeks ago and a lot of people were, missed it and was asking for it. So we asked him you know, if, if he would be kind enough to do it again, run it back. And he said, sure, why not? So we ran it back um, 48 hours, just trying to get any last bit of people that may have missed it. That was DM and me, Troy, Ian, Ernie Alicia, um, asking if we can do it again. This is this is what this is what it is. So the information. No, is I will not be teaching futures. I'm going to be cut you off. No futures, no day trading in this course. No futures, no day trading in this course. Long term, solid investment strategies only. Only. Yep. Uh, uh, so yeah, information is is in the description of this video. I've also just put it in the comment section. Um, somebody asked about the hoodies. Colored hoodies is on the site. Assets yeah. over liabilities. New ones. We got pink. We got rose gold. We got a bunch of new flavors in there. Go yeah, check yeah. it out, y'all. Your, your merch is on the way, too. It's uh, We had a little back order with the shipping. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we, we got your order in. Uh, so, yes, EYL University members, we appreciate you guys. Ian, we want to we want to leave you with the last word since we got another question. Tyrone, I'm gonna let you in. Tyrone, this is just word. the last word, last last question. Last for the night, how you doing, brother? Better call Tyrone. Let's Tyrone, go, Tyrone. Tyrone, what's up? What's what's going on, fellas? Um, good, baby. Um, what's going on, man? I had joined uh last week myself, and um, my wife she really does all the stock stuff, but she couldn't get on the uh Zoom today, so I'm just kind of getting the questions in for her. But uh, my question, well, I think Ian kind of answered the question is about the futures because we have we we are long term investors. We have a pretty sizable portfolio. We've been we've been um investing since I think like 2015, I think. So we have a pretty sizable portfolio. But my question was going to be to Ian about should it should I start thinking about going into the futures pool or just stick to the long term investing? If you have discipline, yes. If you don't, leave it alone. The best thing you can do is go to ninjatrader.com. I make no money if you sign up with Ninja. I haven't got a cup, pen, hat, nothing from them. That no, was, actually, yeah. my wife was going to actually sign up for the for your course that you had on sale. Okay, but but this that's not for teaching you futures. It's right. long term investing only. So if she wants to do any. Futures trading, the only thing I ask is to make sure that if you guys do it as a team, that you both are disciplined, or if she does it, that she's disciplined. If the discipline is there, you can do well. But That's I have to be honest with you. If the discipline is not strong, mm -hmm. it won't work. So. Okay. 
Appreciate you, Tyrone. Okay. Yeah, no so I just asked how much EYL University is. Um, we run the code on that too. EYL one four nine. That's uh, one hundred forty nine dollars for the year, but that price is going up May first. Yeah, that's that's a price to uh, April thirtieth. Yeah, uh, EYL one four nine is a promo code. Um, yes, Ian, uh, we're gonna leave you with the last word. Pick quality companies. Uh, most importantly, put in the work. Sometimes people want the game without putting in the work. And that's a recipe for disaster. Like either, and excuse my language, like, but I said it last night, like some of us just want this shit more than you want it. So like now is the time we're all at home. There's nothing to do, nowhere to go. This is the time when you should be diving in deep. So I've told you what books read, Money Master the Game, Market Wizards, Trade in the Zone. Um, go buy those books, read them, study them. Cause those are the greatest people who ever walked the earth to play in this game put in the work and then everything that you want to happen for you will come true. And if not, you got to live with the consequences of that. So pick quality companies for my traders, stick to your plan, have your targets preset. I know you want a hundred percent bagger. It's cool, but it's, it's better to get 10, 15% every day, walk away and then take one or two trades and be done. So. All right. Appreciate you brother. Um, yeah, we broke a record today. Next week, hopefully, God willing, we'll break another record. And then every week following, we'll just keep breaking records. Market Mondays, yeah, Market Mondays. Look. Oh, oh they, they want the books again. Money Masters the Game is the first book. Market Wizards is the second book. And Trading in the Zone is the third book. They're all thick. But if you're serious about making money and investing in the market and being able to, to like, make some real money, you'll read them. It, like, those books are a cheat code. Our cheat code. So, appreciate yeah, we appreciate everybody coming in. All our earners that came in at rocket numbers, YouTube that came in at record numbers. We are back Wednesday uh, with another class on section eight. Y'all don't want to miss no, that. That's just EYL University. EYL University. That's, that's just what I'm EYL saying. University. That's just for our, our people on Zoom. We're gonna be back on Wednesday. Um, Ian, we appreciate it, brother. No, I Ian, appreciate y'all. Thursday we got a class on government contracting. Ooh. That's gonna be Thursday eight o'clock Eastern time. That's gonna be a big one. That's um, dope. But yeah, Ian, appreciate you, bro. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next week. Yeah, and yeah. Who y'all got in the battle? Teddy Riley and Babyface. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you that. I got Babyface. Uh, Babyface. Man, hopefully, Teddy Riley doesn't and we from New York. embarrass himself again. <laughs> but uh, who you got? Yeah, I'm from Indiana. I got Babyface. All right. All right. All right. So, everybody yeah. that's on here, y'all still got time to catch it. Don't worry. Y'all ain't missed nothing. Y'all ain't missed nothing. Go get your red dress and, and go get your, your, your wine and light the candle. Set the mood right. You got your education. Now let's have a little entertainment. Earn your leisure. We out, y'all. Yeah. Peace. 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 Look at the game.